All right, let's make some stanchions and let's uh, tin this handrail. So, taking some of my 26 gauge copper wire. Uh, don't worry about the color when you get it. This one just happened to be on sale. It was, I don't know, it's like two bucks for 30 yards. It, it, it was dirt cheap. And I think I got it at Michael's. And I use their phone app. Most of you know about the Hobby Lobby phone app where you get 40% off one item. Both Michael's and Joann's also have those apps. And if you ask for help when you're checking out, the clerk will usually uh, look at your phone app and find you a whole bunch of extra savings. I want to show you a couple things here first. Okay, first I'm just going to rough cut to length. I'm just going to lay it on here. I'm going to lay it on here. And I, I want to, it's going to be over. And that's what I want. So since the bottom needs a bend in, and I want some extra on the top for holding and for soldering, I'm going to cut it about that long. Okay, and I'll just add it to my pile over here. All right, actually, I'm going to add it. I'm going to put it right here. I'll show you. I have a whole pile of them made already, because we need 21 for this. So now I'm just going to lay one there, and I'm just going to take some wire, and I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to clip off. That'll make four more. That's all the more that I needed. We'll get to the stanchions in a second here. I'm going to show you a neat little trick that I learned from watching some jewelry making channels. Wire jewelry making. I've watched some on YouTube. And there's some neat techniques that they show there. Okay, so now I can take this off. Okay, I'll take it out. Here's the thing. We need to tin this. As I said before, we will be using acid paste because we need to make a mechanical joint and it's got to be strong. So I always have a little screwdriver to do this and I just take some here on the screwdriver and I'm just going to go ahead and at the end point here. I'm going to get a little bit right there and then I'm just going to work it in all the way down this whole thing. And like I said, when using acid paste, you will have to clean it when you're done. That's just how it works. But using the acid paste means I don't need so much heat to get this to work. I need way less heat. I'm not going to go all the way down to this end yet because that end is going to get bent after we get this thing mostly secured in place. So let's see if we got enough here. As soon as I hit the first spot, this acid is going to start to run. All right, then I want a little pliers to hold it. Okay, so I got my solder and pencil here. I like these pencils. Seven bucks at the auto parts store. The tip in here is pretty long. As it wears out, I can bring it up and I can regrind this and make it new again. And these last a good long time. And then I use this tip tin. Instead of going through the tinning process, you just touch it to the tip tin and you're good to go. And I'll tell you what, that is that is an experience extremely useful thing to have. Alright, so I've got this right here and I've got some solder on it right there. So let's go ahead and get some solder on here. Oh, it's not sticking. It's not sticking. We take our steel wool. See if we can get it to stick down. Yep, got a bead. Okay. This wire gets super hot. I'm going to grab it with my pliers. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead. I'm not going to start in my spot because i got a glob on here. 
Oh, that's nice. Now that I've used up most of that glob, I'll hit that end spot. Look at that. Try to smooth it out. If you don't smooth it, it'll be a bit lumpy when you're done. Let's see if we can get it nice and smooth. Very nice. Here's lobs. Here's one. Here's one. We'll just keep pushing them down towards the end. All right, there we go. Handrail is ready. And since I held on to it with pliers, it's not hot to the touch. Now, let me wipe this acid off. You do that on these in my shop. I use orange microfiber cloths. The color orange tells me that these cloths are used to clean up messes like this. Now, this guy's ready. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna just put it on here, and then we're gonna do these tangents. Okay. Pile tangents. And I'm just gonna go ahead. Probably just do them all. Now here's the trick. So, I got this. <clears throat> these are short pieces of wire. That are roughly the width of the top of this, but not much longer, so close enough. Let's say you got a bent piece of wire. This is a trick I learned from the jewelry bending lady on, on I don't remember what channel it is, but it's really easy to find. You take the top. Now, she uses a 2x4 chunk because she's working with wires that are about this long. But I'm working with these, and I can take my anvil. And if I roll it nice and easy, you don't, you don't put a bunch of pressure on it, you just roll it, and you get a perfectly straight wire. I thought you had to really press down on these, but you don't. You, you do it nice and easy, so they roll nice and easy, and that straightens them. Here's a pretty bad one. Just like that. Let's go ahead and line some up here. We're going to roll out these. We need 21 stanchions. Chances are, one of them isn't going to work out, and I'll have to make an extra one. I am not pressing hard on these. I'm just almost letting the weight of the anvil rest on them. It's nice and straight. Now, this blue coating on here... The acid paste will basically break through that and get right down to the copper wire. And we won't have to worry about it. I do like the uh, gold colored copper because it doesn't really seem to have a 
coating on it, probably because it has it must have some brass content because it's it's really easy to solder. But they didn't have a one five in that color when I was there. They only had these different colors. And the dark blue ones are easier to see. But any color will work. That one took us about a minute. We've got stanchions that are pretty straight. Now these are soft. Once they're in place, and they get bent out from handling these, you can straighten them out with a little pliers, just by squeezing them. That's why I like these. So we're going to end up with round stanchions. Now I did make another video, which you may have already seen where I needed a flat stanchion like on a modern diesel and I got that flat stanchion by hammering with my ball peen I've just flattened the wire on this super easy to wait to make flat stanchions all right these are hard to pick up so I use my tweezers and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to make a bend that's close enough I have pre-drilled all the holes on the side of this unit. And fortunately, wh whoever did this the first time had also drilled holes for the handrails, which they probably had to make out of. I only saw them one time, and that was at the show. And so my friend brought this over, and he had already removed the handrails. And... What I think they did was they sort of forced fit the DD-40 handrails. Because DD-40 handrails are so long that they're hard to make. And let me tell you, I've made some out of O2O 2 old piano wire, stanchions and all. And I'll tell you what, they are hard to make when you do that. This is way easier. And the 015, is, it's probably closer to scale. But, some people don't like it because it's so soft. Just run on your layout and carry And you know that most people are careful that they pick them up from their fuel tanks. They don't pick them up by the handrails. You'll be just fine. If, if the handrails get bent up, like I said, bend them back because they bend so easy. And we're going to have a whole pile here of decent handrails. And then we're going to use the usual method that I've shown before of soldering and then shaping. And there is one spot here that I already saw where the socket that this goes in is broken out. And for that one, we're going to we are going to have to glue it. So we're going to need to make one with a slightly longer kind of like foot on it. We're going to have to glue that one. And if you just have one that's glued like about this long, we'll do it for that one. We'll set that one aside. If you only have to glue one, it'll be fine to take it off later. For example, a reason that you might have to take this shell off is, right now it is wired for DC, but it is wired two motors in parallel to each other. And I made five little circuit boards in there to get all the wires in the right spot, and I made one specifically where you can detach the two leads and you can attach those leads to a decoder and then attach the decoder to the little PC board I put in there. And you are fully operational in DC with two motors. Two motors wired in parallel to each other. Um, I've already checked this stalling out, looking at about 1.3 amps. 
and there's a lot there's plenty of decoders that can handle that that's with two gold blue box motors the, the motors themselves I stripped them down took them completely apart cores and all and redid them there's our handrails they already ready to go all right so next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up and solder 